As spring opens up on our homestead and we begin our busy season of gardening and raising our own food, I'd like to reflect on the challenges and successes we've had this past winter. Let's head over to the cows here, check out what kind of grass reserves we have. Hey there, Rosie. You got mud on your face. It's been kind of fun seeing Buddy grow up because he's now at that age where he's starting to have his dominance over Oak there. Oak's just been abusing him since he was young, especially with those horns he's got, and now Buddy's starting to dominate him back. The downside to Buddy being so fluffy is he gets all these little pokey things in him. You get away from me, Oak. Oak gets a little crazy and he's got those horns and I'm not trying to get impaled by it, so I don't really pet him very much. Anyway, he's our beef, so in a few weeks he's actually going to the butcher. Maybe another day or two on this pasture. This looks like a pretty good pasture. We've got some pretty good grass reserves going on here. Each one of these pastures is about half an acre for them and between the three cows it usually lasts quite a while. We might have about 10 to 15 days left here of grass reserves before we need to start taking them over into the cow barn. Before we take them to the winter cow barn, we need to get all this deep bedding removed, which was from last winter, over into a pile outside of the barn so that way I can get the chickens to till it up and turn it into some really good quality compost. As the years go on, we continue to improve our homestead operations, taking last year's cow bedding from the barn and into a pile outside for our chickens to eventually scratch and turn into compost is a system that not only benefits the cows and the chickens, but also our garden. We always throw down a good layer of sawdust, which we have many years worth from the old Amish owner's sawmill operation. This year, we not only upgraded the size of our cow winter area, we also installed a new gate, built a fence and a cattle feeder panel to make it easier to provide hay, but also to cut down on waste. We got our feeder gate all set up, all our T-posts in place to create a fence. We've got our gate, and then we've got this little tiny fence on the end up to our pig pen there. The time has come. Let's get this gate open for them. Got some alfalfa to bribe them. Gotta open the gate to the pasture. Turn off the solar energizer so I don't shock myself. We gotta open the gate for the last time this season. Let's go get those cows and take them to the barn. Come on, cows. Hey, old buddy. Hey there, Rosie. Let's go. We got Rosie in. I think the other two are running up the street. They're in the barn now, safe and sound. Rosie did pretty darn good, but the other two kind of ran off on their own. It's probably gonna take them a second to get used to this cattle feeder right here, because they've never had anything like that. It's gonna be strange for them to go from the grass to in the barn eating hay, but they should adjust pretty well. It is December 18th and we have been grazing all year round up until today. Time for these guys to uh, overwinter on some deep bedding, eat some hay. They're probably not too happy about it. Better for the land, better for us, better for them. I obviously wish we could have kept them out in the field as long as humanly possible. December 18th is a lot better than we did last year. Last year we only grazed until about October 15th and then we were feeding hay on pasture by early November. We were actually back into the barn. So hopefully next year we can increase that to January and then maybe even later. We'll have to see. We're just going to keep on moving, keep on rotationally grazing and uh, keep deep bedding these guys over the winter. Let's go feed some chickens some food scraps. For most homesteaders, the biggest expense is the feed bill. Although our goal in our homestead isn't to be as cheap as possible, we did test out many different ways to reduce our bill. Feeding our food scraps to the chickens and pigs is something we've done from the start, but eventually we decided to collect expired food from the food bank and feed it to our hungry pigs. We did this for quite a few months and eventually decided to stop. The biggest thing was the food we were receiving. Some of it was way too moldy to feed to the pigs, some was in bite-sized packages which made it difficult to unpackage, and all of the food came with an insane amount of trash that usually overflowed our trash can. We also grew our own corn and soybeans which on a small scale of land may be difficult but if you're feeding a couple livestock it may be viable. Our experience with growing and processing corn was awesome. Our truckers favorite corn grew like crazy and shelling isn't too much work. Although soybeans was very easy to grow, it took a lot of time to shell and for us was way too much work for the reward. This coming year we most likely won't be growing our own grains because we have many other projects that require our time, but for someone with time and some extra space, growing your own grains might be a great way to save some money on an organic feed. It had been a long 10 months of waiting, but the time had finally come. 
Our feeder pig, who was born and raised on our farm, was a good size and ready to be processed for pork. Although I've butchered hundreds of chickens and a cow, I was a little nervous about doing a pig. My biggest fear was that I would miss my shot and our feeder pig would suffer. Thankfully, I got it on the first try. Processing a pig was honestly the best butcher experience I've had so far. I realize for some it may be difficult to watch an animal being butchered. I get asked, how could we be okay with this? The reason why we choose to make the sacrifice and process our own animals is because if I'm going to eat meat, I should also have the responsibility and feel the weight of the entire process. I know for many people they will eat meat but couldn't possibly take part in the butcher process. For me, it's a requirement. I must understand the life this animal had and the sacrifice it made to feed me and my family. Without experiencing those crucial moments, I wouldn't appreciate the sacrifice and wouldn't feel connected to my land and my animals. They say the best time to plant a tree was 20 years ago, and the second best time is today, even in January. Planting a tree is a powerful thing, to realize that you may not sit under the shade of this tree and to still feel the responsibility to plant it is beyond selfless. Although for some of these trees, I may see them flourish in my old age, I do this for the land and for my ancestors that I hope will someday look at these trees and say, man, I am glad someone planted this 80 years ago. Where we don't have pasture, I want trees, and a lot of them. Even in our pastures, I hope to plant trees to provide shade for our cows and a place to perch for local birds. Transplanting trees from the forest is a great way to do this on a budget. Those little saplings in the forest have had a hard time competing with the thick, tall canopy and grow so much quicker and stronger with some space. One of my favorite times this winter was when we got some cold weather and a ton of snow. Homesteading in cold weather really has its challenges. Making sure our livestock are warm and dry, making sure they have water that isn't iced over, and sometimes even just getting to them can be a challenge. We do our best to anticipate the coming storms, and thankfully we were able to get some nice dry bedding to the pigs that spent their winter on the back pasture. You'd be surprised what some hay in an A-frame hut can do to keep a pig warm. As this week went on, we got more and more snow, making it more and more challenging to get back to the pigs. It was a constant breaking of the ice and filling up five gallon buckets to refresh their water bowls. Surprisingly, our solar energizers worked the entire winter without any dead batteries. This homesteading lifestyle isn't always rainbows and butterflies. When you heat your home with wood, you'll go through it so quick on these cold days that it feels like you are constantly running for more at the wood pile. I'm getting the heck out of here. Back to the house, back to the fire, get warmed up. But guess what? We're still getting eggs when it's eight degrees out. Towards the end of the week, we hit the peak of our winter storm. With six to eight inches on the ground, we loaded up the Polaris and headed out to check on the pigs. Although we had many challenges at this time, it was also one of the best experiences we had this winter. Eventually, winter got to me. I was feeling overwhelmed, exhausted, and overworked. Winter can really weigh on you with its short, gloomy days and constant reminder that a homestead isn't always glamorous. When you do the same thing every day, multiple times a day, there's going to be times where you just don't enjoy it like you usually do, and that's okay. I think we've all felt a little burnt out in our lives, and even though we love something so much, sometimes we don't. Usually we have all of our animals penned up in the winter, but decided to put our pigs in our back pasture and let them till it up and hopefully turn it into beautiful green grass this spring and summer. Because of all the rain we got, this became a muddy mess. I questioned myself countless times this winter as I headed out to feed the pigs, slipping around and falling in the mud. But we have to remember, homesteading isn't easy, and just because some days are going to be hard doesn't mean we aren't doing the right thing. I think one of the greatest lessons to learn in life is the ability to recognize that tomorrow is a new day and that the hardships we feel today will help us to appreciate the successes we have tomorrow. There's our rosy girl. She's big, but there's a big baby in there. That's a full bag right there. Man, she is, she is ready to go. We, we are just days away. She's just antsy and agitated. Losing Rosie's calf last year was tough on us. Although we had no control over it, it's hard to not somehow feel responsible for everything that goes on. So as we prepared for Rosie's calf, we needed to get the pen secure and separate our Angus bull. We weren't taking any chances on this calf and we would do anything to make sure they had the best chance at life. And after days and days of constant check-ins, sleepless night after sleepless night, we finally witnessed our first calf on the farm.
Rosie was having a hard time pushing and getting past the calf's head. So after about 20 minutes of this, I decided to jump in and help. All right, lady. I know I said the snow was our favorite moment, but I take it back. This right here was worth all the hardship of this winter. It gave us so much pride in all that we've accomplished and so much happiness for Rosie to finally be a mother. When Rosie lost her calf, we weren't sure if she had some reproductive issues and we were stressed that maybe she just isn't able to produce an offspring. But we knew we wouldn't give up on Rosie that easy. We worked so hard to get her healthy and all that hard work paid off. Give me a whiff. Buddy. Well, the calf's doing pretty good. He's up and walking. I've seen him poop, so that's good news. And I've seen him milk quite a few times, so that's, uh, that's good too. We built a nice milking stanchion for Rosie and stocked up on some pure alfalfa hay for Rosie to eat while we milk her. To end our winter, we decided to build a chicken coop. We spent many weekends working on this project and we did it together. It was a challenge at times, but so much fun building a coop we were both so proud of. It seems like the second the chickens got their new coop, their eggs started tasting better. No, I'm just kidding, but I'm sure they love it. The lessons we've learned on our homestead are so much bigger than homesteading itself. I had lived 24 years before we started homesteading, and I feel like I've learned more about life, more about nature, and even more about myself in a short four years than I did in my first 24. This winter was full of new experiences, new challenges, and new successes. I'm just so thankful to have the opportunity to share it with all of you. Before the video ends, I want to let you know that we have a members area here in YouTube where we post more day-to-day -day stuff and also post our videos to earlier than when you usually see. You can join below by clicking join next to subscribe. You can also connect with us on Instagram and Facebook. Those links are in the description. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you had a wonderful winter and I hope you have an even better spring and we will see you in the next one.